Welcome to the 2021 Annual Meetings Governors Talk Series. I'm Chang Yong Ri, Director of the Asia Pacific Department of the Fund. Uh, today, I have a pleasure of welcoming Mr. Fazil Kabil, Governor of the Central Bank of Bangladesh, to discuss Bangladesh and regional insight, a path toward recovery. Governor Kabil has been the Governor of the Bangladesh Bank since 2016, before which he has had a long and distinguished career in the Bangladesh civil service. Governor Kabil, thanks for joining us. And with this brief introduction, let me give you the floor. Thank you very much, Dr. Shang Yong Ri. It's indeed a great pleasure for me to be here to exchange my views with the APD Director, Dr. Shang Yong Ri. I feel much honored to speak in this Governor Talk program from the Asia Pacific region. Thank you very much once again, Dr. Ri. At the outset, let me take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to the IMF for their timely supports for global financial and monetary developments, safeguarding any crisis situation like the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic. In my talk today, besides highlighting Bangladesh's macroeconomic and financial update, I will also briefly dwell on the common issues of interest and challenges on the road to post-pandemic economic recovery in the region. Since the worldwide outbreak of coronavirus disease, which began to strike heavily on Bangladesh from early March 2020, Bangladesh economy displayed its inherent resiliency. Bangladesh's progression, part of inclusive and environmentally benign economic growth and social development activities remained broadly on track. The money and financial markets remained stable with sufficient liquidity in the system while containing inflation and ensuring a softer market interest rate along with a competitive exchange rate regime. The overall BOP witnessed a healthy surplus in fiscal year 21, supported by significant inflows in, in financial accounts, along with a relatively thinner deficit in the current account, mainly due to solid inward remittances and robust export earnings of Bangladesh. Looking ahead, the growth outlook for the region, including Bangladesh, remains very positive as the reopening of businesses and easing of containment restrictions are leading to normal economic activities amid expected progress in the mass vaccination programs in the region and beyond. The economies of the region, including Bangladesh, started to rebound from the COVID-19 fallout owing to judicious implementation of various stimulus packages well supported by extraordinary fiscal and monetary policy measures. Although the rates of infections, hospitalizations, and even deaths due to COVID-19 have decreased significantly in recent times, the fight against this virus is still far from over. Let me now highlight some of the key challenges on the road to economic recoveries in the region. One, the disproportionate impact and recovery. We have seen that impact of COVID-19 pandemic disproportionately affected the poor and marginal people. The same lopsided slower recovery in, is also observed for those heavily hit population segments. A large part of the world, particularly the low income countries, remain under unvaccinated or makes very little progress in their national inoculation program posing a significant threat to health safety and economic recovery for them. The same uneven scenario is seen in the affordability and availability of vaccines across countries. Slower vaccinations and new waves of COVID-19 infections may delay the economic recoveries in many countries in the region. A well-justified distribution and vaccination program is required to ensure faster and stable recovery in the region. Unanticipated increase in public debt 
is my next point. The unanticipated increases in public debt due to government's comprehensive stimulus packages, including the tax break measures, attributed a challenge for maintaining debt sustainability in many developing countries in the region. The pandemic has also opened up existing structural weaknesses in public finance management. At this stage, the countries will need to think of crafting a medium-term revenue strategy, which includes, among others, modernizing revenue administration, broadening the tax base, increasing tax compliance, and reforming the existing laws and simplifying the documentations. A prudent medium-term revenue strategy will pave the way for exiting from the current tax stimulus measures. Number three, inflationary pressures from supply shocks. Many countries in this region are now facing inflationary pressures from supply shocks due to supply chain disruptions and elevated global commodity prices amid expansionary monetary and fiscal policy stances. However, weak demand has kept the inflation distanced from red zones, reflecting the need to continue cautiously accommodative and expansionary policy stance in the region. Four, undesirable abrupt policy reversal to counteract the adverse impact of COVID-19 on financial sector stability in terms of liquidity shortages, credit crunch, and loan recovery problems. Most of the central banks in the region adopted accommodative and expansionary monetary policy, coupled with softened loan repayment and rescheduling strategies. Since the economic situation in most countries in the region is still rather fragile, the amount of bad debts is likely to increase if the policy reversal is taken abruptly. The appropriate time and pace of unwinding these stimulus packages have to be decided very cautiously. And finally, I'd like to say about contingency plans to regain jobs and income losses. COVID-19 resulted in millions of people losing their jobs and hundreds of thousands of firms reducing or shutting down their businesses, imp imposing income and investment losses. The sudden unemployment and slowdown in economic activity with reduced labor demand have resulted in massive increase in poverty levels. Many workers shifted from formal to informal work with lower incomes. Economic recovery plans must include continuing job creation and income generation activities for the affected people and enterprises. Let me stop here with my observation about key challenges of the Asia Pacific region. I would like to hand over the floor to Dr. Chang Young Ri if he has any questions on my discussion about the Bangladesh and regional insights, a path towards recovery. Thank you, Governor. Over to Dr. Ri. Yeah, thank you, Governor, for your opening remark. Uh, my first question is that you said that the COVID has disproportionate impact across the countries in the region. And also you emphasize the long lasting impact on the income inequality and the delay of the process of income convergence across countries in the region. As a central banker, how you address this income inequality issues across in your country as well as uh, across the region? Can central bank can actually address these income inequality issues effectively? Thank you for your question. As you know, Access to formal employment opportunities, stimulus fund, health care facilities, and vaccination programs vary widely in countries within the same region. A low-income country with dominating informal sector had to suffer the most due to COVID-19 pandemic. At the same time, such countries are facing acute capacity and resources limitation to fight back and regain the recovery momentum. These vulnerabilities may lead to increased poverty and income inequality in both absolute and relative terms among the countries in the region. However, we believe that the adverse impact on the income inequality and recovery momentum is a transitory phenomenon 
as the economies in the region will continue to recover steadily under favorable economic conditions ensured by coordinated fiscal and monetary policies along with regional and multilateral cooperation and supports. The idea of convergence in economics is one of the predictions of the famous American economist Robert Solow's neoclassical growth model. It is sometimes known as the catch-up effect, the hypothesis that poor economies per capita incomes will tend to grow at faster rates than richer economies under certain ideal conditions. Our expectation is that multilateral donor agencies and development partners like the International Monetary Fund will continue their supports to ensure enabling conditions for such economic convergence. Thank you. Governor, well understood. Uh, but uh, in coping with this uh, COVID crisis, uh, like many advanced economies, many low-income and emerging market use also unconventional policy, and some countries use monetary financing of the budget deficit, uh, including the Central Bank of Bangladesh. And we have a certain concern on this monetization of budget deficit. Do you think this is going to be a new norm, and uh, how this will affect the Central Bank autonomy and reputation? It's true that many countries resorted to monetary financing of the budget budget deficit due to count, uh, just to counteract the adverse shocks of COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, I think this is not a new norm because the sudden spread of coronavirus caught governments and economies unaware. Preventive and containment measures against the pandemic severely disrupted normal economic activities. As a result, government revenue collection drastically fell and stimulus packages for industry service and agriculture and social safety net programs and above all health care expenditures escalated financing government budget in the traditional manner became quite a challenge as you know and hence to mitigate fiscal pressures during the crisis governments resorted to accommodative monetary financing in a well coordinated fashion so that the economy stays afloat with adequate liquidity and credit availability while price stability is maintained. We believe that central bank policies to deal with the ongoing crisis have not undermined central bank's independence since it has not interfered with the central bank's persuasion of price and financial stability goals. As the economy recovers, monetary financing of the budget deficit will start returning to their normal levels. I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I think the exit policy will be an important, you know, homework to do uh, later on. And uh, you mentioned about uh, you, uh, the U.S. monetary policy normalization, and uh, many Asian countries are worried about the impact. How do you think that the U.S. monetary uh, policy normalization in the next couple of years will affect the region? Well, as the U.S. normalized monetary policy. Economies with strong association to the United States through trade channel and financing linkage may face challenges in maintaining financial stability. If the U.S. yield rises faster, it may provide adverse spillovers over the financial channel and capital outflows in those two other eco economies. Countries with slower economic recovery or limited access to vaccines may face daunting challenges as rises in longer term yield rates in advanced economies may induce the other countries, including some in the Asia and Pacific region, to tighten financial conditions when they have, in fact, large financing needs. I believe that most countries in the region are able to tailor their monetary policy stance, accommodating the domestic monetary and interest rate conditions, regardless of the U.S. monetary policy normalization. Central bankers should remain watchful about the global financial conditions while monitoring closely the country's exchange rate volatility and capital account flows to cope with the challenges by the U.S. rate normalization. In Bangladesh, we believe that there is not so much direct impact of U.S. tightening monetary policy due to limited 
financial openness of our economy. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Governor. Let's move on to the Bangladesh economy a little bit more in detail. Uh, you know, unfortunately, many South Asian countries, including Bangladesh and India, suffered quite a lot uh, by the Delta virus. And the uh, positive growth momentum in the first quarter has turned into more negative in the second quarter. But you said that the Bangladesh economy is looking forward to having a more strong positive growth uh, from now on. So do you think that the South Asia countries in general can have a strong recovery from the third quarter of this year? And uh, what is the uh, kind of reason why we have to expect the uh, recovery soon back? Please. Well, uh, the growth outlook for the region, mm -hmm. including Bangladesh, remains very positive with the reopening of businesses and easing of containment restrictions leading to normal economic activities amid expected progress in the mass vaccination programs, both at home and abroad. It's true that a large part of the COVID-19 stimulus was channeled through the banking sector and several policies were relaxed to deal with the crisis. I would like to share in this regard that the Central Bank of Bangladesh was always well aware about any instability threat. We remain vigilant and cautious so that any potential source of financial instability can be avoided. It is noteworthy also that the banking sector of Bangladesh performed well in fiscal year 21 amid the COVID-19 pandemic compared to fiscal year 20, supported by prudential banking resilience policies from Bangladesh Bank. The asset quality, capital adequacy, and profitability of banks were healthy in fiscal year 21, and it will likely to continue in fiscal year 22 also, as well. I think one of the factors which will decide uh, this recovery speed may be the oil prices and the inflation pressure. And do you think the current inflation pressure and the oil price rise is a uh, uh, temporary pressure? And how you handle this inflation pressure now? Well, a faster than expected economic recovery in advanced economies is boosting prices as supply chains have been struggling to keep up economic trend. The inflationary developments are not uniform across the countries. Though inflation expectations in emerging economies are generally well anchored around central banks' inflation target, some countries are experiencing rapidly rising food inflation and temporarily high headline inflation as well, which could raise inflation expectations in near future. In such a case, the central banks need to to be ready for curtailing current asset purchase programs. The central banks may also consider cautiously withdrawing some of the current monetary stimulus without hurting business activities in order to keep the inflation within the targeted level. Thank you, Governor. Thanks very much for your time. And uh, thanks everyone for joining us. And uh, from the IMF in Washington, I wish you a very good day. Thanks, Governor, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you once again for this wonderful arrangement, Dr. Lee yeah, and your you. team. Thank you very much. Good to see you again soon. Bye. Bye.